Amen. Let's all stand together tonight. The Lord has been so good to me, I feel like praising the Lord. Until that blessed home I see, I feel like praising the Lord. Yes, I feel like praising the Lord. I feel like praising the Lord. The Lord has been so good to me, I 
I feel like praising the Lord until that blessed home I see. I feel like praising the Lord. Yes, I feel like I'm praising the Lord. I feel like praising the Lord. My heavenly home is bright and fair. I feel like praising the Lord. When I look all around and see the good things that He does for me, I know I'm unworthy of them all. But for His blessings that He freely gives, I owe my whole life to Him. I've got so much to thank Him for. And I've got so much to thank Him for, so much to praise Him for. You see, He has been so good to me. And when I think of what He's done and where He's brought me from, I've got so much to thank Him for. Well, and sometimes while I'm on this way, I stop just to kneel and say, Lord, thank you for all you've done for me. And then one day I'll retreat heaven shore. Oh, please let me kneel once more. I've got so much to thank him for. to thank Him for so much, to praise Him for you see, He has been so good to me, and when I think of what He's done and where He's brought me from, I've got so much to thank Him. Amen. Give the Lord praise in the house tonight. Brother Gary, you come on. Y'all just remain standing tonight. It's only congregation singing if you sing. I tried. It's better to be a part of the meeting than in a meeting. Amen. Amen. Um, on the resurrection morning, when all the dead in Christ arise, praise the Lord, I'll have a new
can feel it coming on. But what a hallelujah morning when the last trump of God shall sound. Well, praise the Lord, I'll have a new life. Praise all of us and sing the shout heavenly beauty all around. Well, praise the Lord, I'll have a new What a hallelujah morning when the last trump of God shall sound. Praise the Lord, I'll have a new life. Praise all of earth and saints and shout heavenly beauty all around. Praise the Lord, I'll have a new No 
in glory through his son Christ Jesus. If God's good to you, can you shout hallelujah tonight? Oh my, give him praise one more time. <laughs> Bless the Lamb of God. I don't want to wear it out, but I wish he'd have sung it one more time. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> I'm telling you, that song is such a blessing. And I'm telling you, it's just a reminder of that 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. In verse 18, wherefore comfort one another with these words. Aren't you glad this world's not our home? We're just passing through here. The devil may try to get you down, beat you down, stomp you down, and kick you around. But I'm glad I'm heaven bound tonight. Amen. Listen, we're going to pray right now and ask God to bless the service. And we'll have offering towers out for you to support the meeting. And I know some of the meetings across the country, the pastors, have uh, those towers ain't worked out too good for them. People forget about them. Listen, if you don't, if you don't, give, if you don't put in, it's all right. Okay? We're not going to make you. But I'm glad that God takes care of us every day. That we live. And if you think if you think this meeting's worthy of supporting, you support it tonight. And I believe God will bless you. Amen. Let us pray. Kind Jesus, we love you. God, we thank you for your many blessings. God, we don't want to hold up this service. We don't want anything, Lord, to start. We're here to worship you. We're here to praise you. And Lord, we're here to hear your word preached. And God, we pray for this service. God, we pray that, that you would help each one that's here. Lord, touch each one that listens online. And God, I pray that revival camp meeting fire would burn in all of our hearts. And God, we'll glorify and magnify your name for all you do. And God, should there be souls here tonight that's lost, may they be saved. Thank you for the two souls this morning that were saved. Lord, we glorify and we magnify your holy name. You are God, and there are none else. 
God bless this service. Lord, may America repent. And Lord, may the fire fall here and burn from coast to coast, from, from east to west and north to south. And God will give you glory in the mighty name, in the name above all other names, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name. And all God's people shouted, Amen. Amen. Would you make welcome Roger Lee Duncan II tonight as he sings. A little bit more on the monitor. Jesus and his 12 disciples came into the town one day. Philip by of Caesarea, Matthew tells us, was the place. There the Savior had some questions for these men who followed him. He said, fellas, will you tell me who do men say that I am? They responded, some folks say you're John the Baptist, they believe. Others think you're Jeremiah or Elijah, you might be. Or perhaps another prophet who has risen from the dead. But then Jesus said unto them, who do you say that I am? Simon Peter was the spokesman for the twelve so many times. And although he sometimes blundered this time, he sure got it right without any hesitation. So correctly he declared the great answer to the question that the Savior asked him there. Who do you say I am? Who do you say I am? are the Christ, God's anointed one. Who do you say I am? Who do you say I am? You are Jehovah's one and only son. Now we are living in a day where many say they don't believe that our Jesus was Messiah or that he was deity. He's no different from the others and he's not the only way oh but i'm glad there's still a remnant who has something else to say he is the great i am he's heaven's perfect lamb the one who taketh all our sins away he is the great i am the rock on which i stand a savior who is worthy of our praise who do you say he is he is the great i am with nail scars in his hands that proved his love on calvary that day he is the great i am both son of god and man oh he is the truth the life and he's the way he is the great i am he's the only one who can declare that home one day yes i'm glad he'll return to take us home one day that's who he is church that's who he is a little bit, a little bit more music if we can get it up here brother call to worship is there anyone here Loves the Lord Jesus, you're thankful that his blood washed your sins away. Is there anyone here that he has been good to? Then let's give him glory in his house today. That's why we're here tonight. Do you love him tonight? Oh, is there anyone here who loves the Lord Jesus? You're thankful that his blood washed your sins away. Is there anyone here that he has been good to? Then let's give him glory in his house today. Now in too many churches, 
across this great land the fire of God has grown dim oh you see the worship and praise that used to be common it's no longer offered to him oh but could I remind you that God's just as good as he's ever been in the past and so it's time for the people of God to decide oh that we're gonna bring that praise back is there anyone here who loves the Lord Jesus he is your Savior oh and you're not ashamed is there anyone here who thinks he is a worthy
Just going to soak it in for a little bit, if that's all right with y'all. Thankful for his presence. <clears throat> Help us, God. Come by this way. Anybody need him? I need Jehovah, oh, yeah. Rafa, my healer, to release his power today. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are passing this way. Oh, 
I need the God. Call on him, church. Of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to come by this way. I need Jehovah, Rapha, my healer, to release his power today. Yeah.
describe how I feel about the ones I hold you in my life. Just three little In the words. name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, with your stripes, may they be healed in Jesus' mighty name. And all God's people shouted to my wife Amen. and my boys, my family. Oh, give it praise, sir. There is something that I want to say. Oh, I love you. I want you to know it today. Yes, I love you. It's a privilege. Sunday, boy, it's been a time of, of hurting and suffering, uh, probably more death than we've seen in a long time, and uh, I believe it was said earlier this week, God's people are weary, God's people are tired, God's people uh, need some relief, and uh, a few years ago we had uh, some young, actually it was when Ed Varney passed away, Ed Varney uh, was our, one of our cousins, Ed Varney passed away, and and I can't remember if it was Joey Goody or, or Trenda, but it was around that time that we had a lot of death. And uh, it just felt like we were in a wilderness. I don't know if you've ever been there. It's just like, hey, this is the wilderness. But 
You know, the Lord reminded me in his word that he said, even in those desert and wilderness experiences, he'll send little streams to us. Yeah. And they're all from him. They come in different ways. Sometimes they come through camp meeting. Amen. This is a stream for me. I don't know about you. They'll come through the saints of God encouraging. They'll come through a message. They'll come through God's word. They'll come through the Holy Spirit. Uh, it, I don't, I'm not caught up in how they get there. Just know that who they're from. And that's from the Lord Jesus. And so if you're hurting today, I, I, I told Gary's church, God is not taken back by our blunt transparency to him. He's not taken back by that. In fact, I think he welcomes that. When you get to the point that you just don't have anything left, you're as empty as you've ever been, your faith is as weak as it's ever been, I'm thankful he has a provision for that. He has a provision. And I hope this, is, this has been already this week that for you, and I hope it continues to be. But I pray this song will, will, will be a blessing to you, and we'll get out of the way.
Listen, all the way from Graham County, North Carolina tonight, he's my friend. I want you to make him welcome. We love him, and I'll tell you what, he's just as fine as a man as I know. Would you make welcome Patrick O'Dell? Amen. Bless him, Lord. Amen. Well, it's a great honor and a privilege to be here tonight. I mean that from the very bottom of my heart. So far, I've got exactly what I prayed for today. I said, Lord, just don't let me get in your way. And, uh, <clears throat> boy, he sure moved here tonight, ain't he? So if I start getting in his way from this point on, you help me, all right? I want to follow the Lord. I, I'm about wore out. I'll be honest with you. I've worshiped God for an hour in the spirit over there. Hey, Amen. Ain't it been a good place to be tonight? Ain't God good? Ain't it good to be saved tonight? Praise the Lord. Boy, I'm so glad I'm saved. I ain't worried about going to hell tonight. Got a home in heaven. Been set free of my sins. Washed in the blood of Jesus. And born again. <laughs> Glory to God. Well, I tell you, it's a good place for me to be. I love y'all. And I really do mean that. I was sitting there and I was reminded of old brother Furman Wilson. Many of you probably don't know the, who that is, but most of you know who the primitive quartet is. And the tenor singer they had for years, Norman Wilson. That's his brother, Furman. He was a man of God. He was actually in the group when they started out for the first five years. And the calling to preach led him not to be able to travel the way they were needing to. Furman was a great man of God, and many times you'd call him, and you'd be going somewhere, and you didn't know that person, or you'd ask him about somebody. Well, if he didn't have a lot to say about them, he'd just kind of go, yeah, little brother, I know them, and that'd be about that. But now, if he liked them, he'd say, little brother, they're our kind. And I want to say tonight, y'all are my kind, amen. I don't care if we're down in Sefner or in Crossville, or here in Hayesville. Y'all are my kind, amen. <laughs> Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Second Kings chapter number 7. I'll try my best to not be as long as, well, I ain't going to make no promises. <clears throat> Second Kings chapter number 7. We're going to be trying our best tonight to preach on the four leprous men. How many of you are familiar with this scripture in 2 Kings chapter 7? The four lepers. Raise your hand tonight if you're familiar with it. Amen. A few more here tonight. You don't hear a lot of messages preached on this scripture. But God has definitely laid it on our heart for this service tonight. And I'm going to be honest with you. It's been sung nearly every point of what I was planning to preach. Hoy, nailed them all. Amen. In song. I'll say the Holy Ghost did. God done that. Amen. And then Luke got up, and the first song he sung, I feel like traveling on. I, I started shouting over there right then. Amen. I just uh, want to mind the Lord tonight. I'm going to read quite a bit of Scripture here. I hope you're patient with me on that. But the Word of God's the most important thing that will come out of my mouth tonight. I want you to know that. This is a story, but it's a Bible story. It's, it's a truth. It's a biblical truth. This really happened. I'll start in verse number 1 tonight, and I ask you to pray much for us this evening. The Bible says in 2 Kings chapter 7, verse number 1, Then Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, Tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel, and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. 
Then a Lord on whose hand the king leaned answered the man of God and said, Behold, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, might this thing be? And he said, Behold, this is the man of God speaking back to him, more or less this man that was with the king just laughed in the man of God's face is what happened here. He said, if they were windows in heaven, might this thing happen? And he more or less just laughed in the man of God's face. And the man of God said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but shalt not eat thereof. Now listen to verse number 3. And there were four leprous men at the entering in of the gate, and they said one to another, Boy, you pay close attention to this tonight. Why sit we here until we die? Mm, glory. <laughs> if we say we will enter into the city, then the famine is in the city, and we shall die there. And if we sit here, still here, we die also. Now therefore come and let us fall under the host of the Syrians. If they save us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall but die. More or less, they got the attitude and they said, What have we got to lose? We might as well try it. Amen. <laughs> and they rose up in the twilight to go into the camp of the Syrians. And when they were come to the uttermost part of the camp of Syria, behold, there was no man there. Glory to God, I'm about to shout on every verse. <laughs> Glory. For the Lord had my... <laughs> For the Lord had made the host of the Syrians to hear a noise of chariots and a noise of horses, even the noise of a great host. And they said one to another, Lo, the king of Israel has hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to come upon us. Wherefore they arose and fled in the twilight and left their tents and their horses and their asses, even the camp as it was, and fled for their lives. And when these lepers came to the uttermost part of the camp, they went into one tent and did eat and drink and carried thence silver and gold and raiment and went and hid it and came again and entered into another tent and carried thence also and went and hid it. Then they said one to another, huh, Boy, it'd be good if we, if we got a hold of this. Mm, the church is too quiet. <laughs> we know what we've got. We ought to be wanting to share it tonight. We do not well this day is a day of good tidings, and we hold our peace. If we tarry till the morning light, some mischief will come upon us. Now therefore come that we may go and tell the king's household. He's saying, let's go let them know what we found. <laughs> Boy, I'll tell you, when I found Jesus and he found me, I better just read it and then I'll try to pray. <laughs> God is so good. So they came and called unto the porter of the city, and they told them, saying, We came to the camp of the Syrians, and behold, there was no man there, neither voice of man but horses tied and ashes tied and the tents as they were. And he called the porters, and they told it to the king's house within. Mm, that's as far as I'm going to read. I'll catch you up on the rest. Father, as we bow tonight in your presence, God, I thank you for another opportunity, God, to be in your house. It's already been so good for me to be here tonight. I thank you for every song that's been sung, every testimony that's been declared, every prayer that's been praised. I thank you for your men. I thank you for your people, God, tonight. I thank you for this church. I thank you for your word. And most of all, for the Savior and salvation, God. I thank you, Lord, for all that you do for us each and every day. Lord, we come to you right now asking you, God, for a special touch tonight. We need your help, God, as always. I pray you'd anoint our lips. Hide us behind the cross of Calvary. Let them see Jesus and not me. And God, I pray tonight that you'd get glory out of everything that's said and done. Lord, I pray to... Mm, Lord, I pray tonight at first one in the house that's never been saved. God, that you'd get hold of 
them and Father save their soul Lord I pray you'd restore the backslider and encourage the weary saint Father we love you we thank you and we praise you and we ask you these things tonight in the name above all other names your precious son Jesus Christ now to really understand what I've just read to you tonight I'm going to have to back up and catch you up on a little bit of what's going on we'll have to go back to 2 Kings chapter number 6 tonight and you'll have to realize at this time in the Bible right here uh, the king of Syria was going around he was conquering cities he was wreaking havoc and he was trying his best to come against the children of Israel now every time he would devise a plan to come into one of the cities and attack the children of Israel God's great man Elisha would send word to the king of Israel and warn him of the plan of the Syrians now the king of Syria got mad uh, because he didn't realize what was going on he thought somebody was writing him out so to speak he said who keeps warning them where we're at and one wise man in the crowd said none other than the great man of God Elisha he said he's telling them what you're speaking in your bedchamber he said we'll have to take care of him hey I'll tell you what they came against him one too many times it never worked so the Bible said that they fell off from trying to come against the children of Israel and what they done was they went down and they set up there around Samaria the Bible says that they actually besieged the city now I want you to realize and know brother Dr. Todd Black last night preached a wonderful message and I was about to shout last night because God had done give me this I will just keep on walking amen praise be unto God and God is able I heard that so many times last night that God is able oh, well what happened right here my friends oh, was they come against Samaria they had it besieged he was talking last night about what bad times we're in and I'll agree a hundred percent we are I've never seen so much deceit, division in my life I've never seen so much downtroddenness so much discouragement it's come against me it's come against the church it's come against God's men it's come into families it's come into schools it's in our children's lives I've never seen a time like it but my friend I want you to know I want to preach you a word of encouragement here tonight there's been bad times before and God brought them through and God ain't changed I want you to realize what was happening right here in this time there was a famine in Samaria and my brother I do not read of another famine in the word of God like what was going on right here it was so bad they were starving to death they didn't have anything I want to read to you what the Bible says uh, the Bible says it was so bad that they sold an ice's head for four score pieces of silver now I want to put that into perspective tonight I studied a little bit on that under normal conditions four score pieces of silver would have bought the whole donkey at that time but not here in this famine they were selling a head normally they they didn't eat the head but they were tickled to death to have a donkey's head at this time just to scrape a little meat off the bones the Bible says a fourth part of the cab of Doug's done was sold for five pieces of silver at this time I studied on that a little bit some people says it's a little over a quart some people says it's about a pint it was a Hebrew measurement any way you look at it it wasn't much and it was Doug's dung some people says it was a type of vegetable vegetable pulse but I believe that it was what the Bible says and it was dove's dung amen that means bird poop they were willing to eat bird poop at this time oh you think that's bad they were starved to death that ain't the worst of it you keep reading in 2 Kings chapter 6 I'll tell you how bad it was two women made a pack they said I'll tell you what we'll do today we're going to eat my son and tomorrow we'll bore your son and we'll eat him him. The one woman come through good on her word. She said, all right, let's eat my son. They boiled him in a pot and they eat him. And then the next day, the other woman hid her son. And that woman was, she was upset and she was crying out and weeping. And the king of Israel was walking along the wall that day. And he overheard her crying out. And he said, what's wrong with you? And she told him what had took place. And the Bible said that he 
rent his clothes and he had sackcloth on underneath and I'll tell you what he got angry he got angry at the man of God and he went down seeking out Elisha and he went down he sent a messenger and the man of God was sitting in there the Bible said with the elders and they come in uh, the messenger did and he said shut the door behind him cause the king's on his way and here come the king and the man of God had a good message at this time he said I'll tell you what he said about this time tomorrow he said we're going to have plenty of plenty of flour and plenty of barley uh, you'll not have to pay much money for it and then that man that was with the king he began to laugh and he said if the windows were opened in heaven he said this thing might be we've tried to catch you up to date do you understand what's going on it's bad times it's hard times all right here we are it's bad I'm telling you, it don't look good. The, the king of Syria and the Syrians have the city besieged. They're sitting all around. No doubt waiting on them to die of starvation in there. Not letting anything go in and out of the city. And these four old leprous men, they were sitting outside the gate. Now I want you to know that leprosy was a death sentence. I'm telling you, it was uncurable. It was the worst disease that you could have. They were looked down upon. They were outcast. Why do you think they were sitting outside the gate? They wasn't welcomed in the city. They were sitting out there and they were all alone. And it was as bad as it had ever been. And they finally got to talking to one another. And they said, it ain't going to get no worse. How could it get any worse? They said, if we get up and we go into the city, they're going to kill us. We're lepers. They said, if we sit here, we're going to die of starvation. They said, if we don't do anything in time, this leprosy is going to kill us. They said, I'll tell you what we're going to do. They said, let's just get up and let's just go into the camp of the Syrians. Because at this time, if somebody was not violent, or somebody was taken captive by, by the enemy, they were offered food and offered a meal. You can read that in chapter 6 right there when he led the blind men into Syria, into, into Samaria, the blind Syrians. You can read how they done them. So in their mind they thought the best we can do is just fall into the host of Syria. They'll take us captive. And they said, at least we'll get fed. At least we'll get something to eat. But they said, why sit we here until we die? And God gave me this thought if he'll help me to preach for just a few moments tonight. It's time to get up and go. We've been sitting around for too long now. I've been saved this month, Brother Kenny. Twelve years. <laughs> Praise God. Second week in October 2009, I gave my heart to Jesus Christ and I ain't been the same ever since. Hallelujah, glory to God. You know my testimony. Not one drop of drugs, not one drop of alcohol has been in this body in right now 12 years, praise God. I've been trying my best to serve the Lord. I've been trying my best, as old brother Mays Jackson used to say, to keep the hammer down and glory bound. But praise God, I've never seen a time in my nearly 12 years of preaching where it seems like people's just quit. It seems like they fell off. It seems like they're just going to sit around and wait until they die. But my friend, this thing ain't over yet. If it was, we'd have done heard the trump of God. He'd have done come and got us. It ain't over yet. We've got some living to do. We've got some serving to do. I don't know how much time that I've got left. I don't know how much time that you've got left. But it's time to get up and go. Amen. <laughs> Woo. I know I'm preaching to the choir tonight. And I promise you, if you'll go back in your mind, every point that God's been feeding me has been sung here tonight. But I want to say this this evening. 
It's time to get up and go. It's time to go to work for the Lord. It's not time to quit. We are witnessing the Thessalonians falling away of the church. There ain't as many people as they used to be. We're having a hard time finding young men that are willing to serve and young women that are willing to serve. We need some people that will stand in the gap and make up the hedge. We need some people with a made-up mind. My Bible still teaches that the fields are wide under harvest. All the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. I'm going to say tonight it's time to get up and go to work for the Lord. Amen. It's not time to slow down. It's time to let the brakes off and let the wheels spin free. It's time to travel on for the Lord. I feel like traveling on. Amen. They used to sing that song, and whenever I was a young preacher, I used to like to say this, but I don't try to make as many people mad as I used to. Not all the time. But I'd, I'd get up my big way after they'd sing that song, and I'd say you need to travel on whether you feel like it or not. <laughs> Woo, glory! We've got a race to run tonight, church. That's right, preacher. I want to encourage you for a many those that are getting up and going on. We might do some Facebook preaching here tonight. You say, we're preaching to the choir, to those that are here tonight. Well, let me tell you something. Hoy doesn't mention it. Be not wearied and well-doing, for we shall reap in due season if we faint not. I'm witnessing the people that are still in there fighting for the Lord, still in there, ain't, ain't give up, ain't quit. I'm witnessing them getting so tired and so run down and under such an attack. I'm going to be honest with you. Somebody asked me earlier out there in the vestibule, they said, have you had a good day? I said, well, it's been an eventful day. I said, I've been attacked spiritually. I've been attacked physically. I said, but praise God, I've had some blessings too, eh? Amen. That's life, ain't it? Weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Don't give up, child of God. It's time to get up and go. Don't sit down too long. Get you a little rest and keep on going. We're in a marathon. We're not in a hundred yard dash. We're not in a sprint. But I'll tell you what I've been noticing, Hoy. I've been noticing that finish line coming into view, brother. Praise God, I'm telling you. That gets me excited. That catches another gear. I'm ready, praise God, to go be with Jesus. But I'll tell you, I want to take as many as I can with me, amen. Don't you? It's time to get up and go, amen. Why sit we here until we die? <laughs> Woo, glory. Now I'm going to have to preach for a minute to those watching on the airways and those that may never even hear it, but maybe it's for you to Pray about it. And I'm going to be as nice as I can. I've tried to learn to do that, being a pastor. <laughs> Get you in trouble if you don't. <laughs> well, it just makes things harder. <sighs> I 110% know that there's people that have every right to be scared of this virus. They have autoimmune diseases and deficiencies and things that's, I know that they ought to be afraid of this. But do you know, our first Sunday back in church, out of the parking lot, we was in the parking lot a month and a half. And they wasn't a case of corona within 200 miles of Graham County at that time. But we all went out in the parking lot. We was out there a month and a half, and we had some wonderful services, praise God. But our first Sunday back, you know what I stood before the congregation and I told them? I said, everybody that I expected not to be here, that had a right not to be here, is here. But where are the ones without excuse? Uh, 
God has blessed me and given me the privilege. I get to go down to Sefner, Florida and preach to some of the most precious people I know. I've been to Ohio and Mississippi, Louisiana, Tennessee, Georgia, Kentucky. And you know what I see nearly everywhere I go? Those faithful few that are still in there. But what's happened to that generation, 50, 40, my age mainly, and younger? What is your excuse for not being at the house of God? He said, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. Even as the manner of some is. He said, even more so as we see the day approaching. David said, he'd be planted in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. David said, those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. I'm telling you, it's not a time to quit. It's a time to get in. I'm saying tonight, it's time to get up. It's time to go to the house of God. It's time to worship God like never before. It's time to preach. It's time to sing. It's time to play. It's time to praise. It's time to pray. We need to get up. We need to go. And we need Need to pray, Amen. Can I throw this in there? I'd like to have me about a twenty-five passenger van and take this first free will prayer room with me everywhere I go to preach. Mm. Woo! You talk about a blessing. You talk about crank your tractor. That'll do it, amen. Woo! If your wood's wet, get that crowd praying for you in there. You'll get dried out and on fire before long. It's time to get up and go. It's time to get back in the house of God. I worry about so many of them because John said, if they'd have been up with us, they'd have no doubt continued with us, amen. Jesus told them some hard sayings. And I'll tell you what, many of them went away. And he looked at old Peter and he said, Will ye also go away? And Peter said, Lord, where would we go? There's nowhere else to go but to you. When hard times come, when sickness comes, when death comes, when troubles come, when fear comes, don't run away from the Lord. Run to the Lord. It's time to get up and go to the house of God. Amen. <laughs> Woo, glory. Now I'm going to have to preach for me. I'm just following God. I ain't got a note one. I'm just, <laughs> he just, it's just them mental notes, and I ain't got much of mine, so he's got to be putting it in now. <laughs> the best I can <clears throat> remember what the Word of God teaches is that if you come to this altar and try to offer your gift, and you remember that there's somebody out there that's got an ought against you. Do you know what one of the greatest problems in our churches, Brother Kenny, is? You can feel it. I mean, I go in places. You can feel it when you walk in. People with ought. James said, not to grudge against your brother. Jesus fervently taught us to be forgiven. But I'm telling you, I've seen some good old Baptist folk. I ain't necessarily going to call them Christians, but I've seen some good old Baptist folk. <clears throat> that son, they could hold on to a grudge tighter than anything in this world. And I'm going to say tonight, it's time to get up and go to that person and make things right. Do you know how many do you know how many times that I have seen people die in their bitterness? 
sometimes, and I hate to say this, but it's the truth. Hey, some churches out there, the only thing going to fix them is a good funeral. Amen. I, I'm not trying to say that in a mean way. But I'm saying there's some people so content on just, I mean, stirring up strife and division. I always got something bothering the pastor with something, troubling the church, continually stirring something, getting something going, making people mad. I know what you're thinking. Why didn't you preach this stuff first and save the best stuff for last? I wished I would have. <clears throat> but my Bible teaches. Can I, I can promise you I lived in bitterness and anger and unforgiveness for 26 years. And I'd like to say when I got saved, son, he took them drugs from me. But I realized when I was 31, the first time that I ever had a conversation with my real father, I realized I still had some of that bitterness and unforgiveness in me. And God worked on me. And he helped me with that. But I was 35 before I went to him. And I went to him. And, and we have such a relationship now, and I thank God for that. But I just let everything go, that stuff I was hanging on to. And sometimes as a Christian, that's what we've got to do. And I want to say tonight that reconciliation is possible. Was there a greater grudge in the Bible than Jacob and Esau? <laughs> I mean, he feared for his life. He hid for... How many years was it? I can't even remember right now. I wasn't planning on preaching on that. But he hid for years down there. And he finally went to his brother and he was scared to death. He had an offering to give him. All this stuff. And Esau said, man, I don't want that. And he met him with a kiss. And it was a kiss of reconciliation. Sometimes the devil will keep you living in fear. He'll keep you afraid of going to that person. But I promise you the best thing you can ever do is go to them. And whether they receive you or not, it'll be right on your end. It's time to get up and go. Amen. Why sit we here until we die? Do you really want to die in your bitterness and unforgiveness? Come on, preacher, that's good. Surely not. No. I know I don't. There's times that I know that we need to let God work in things. I've been praying about an issue in my life with somebody, a total misunderstanding, a close friend. And there were words exchanged. I've been praying about that thing for over a month now. And today it was resolved. Yes. Glory. God's able, Brother Kenny. <laughs> God is able. I nearly preached that message. I like it. God's able. Tonight, this is the last thing, and I'll be done. Probably the most important thing, not to downgrade anything I've preached on, because I believe it's all biblical and it's all very important in our lives as Christians. But I believe tonight the most important thing that I'm going to speak to you on here tonight, if you're here this evening and you're lost, Why sit you here until you die? I wonder how many people will actually lift their eyes in hell off the pew of a Baptist church. <clears throat> I heard a preacher share a story of a conversation with an atheist the other day. They went back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And the preacher finally got a bit of wisdom and he spoke to this man and he said, well, let, let me just tell you this. He said, he said what, if, what if you're right? He said, what if everything I've preached and taught about Jesus and my salvation, he said, what if there ain't nothing to it? He said, what if we just die and it's over, they put us in the ground and there is no eternity, no afterlife? That atheist said, now you're talking, preacher. He said, yeah, that, that's right, right there. 
He said, what if? He said, well, let me ask you a more important question. He said, what if I'm right and you're wrong? What if you're not believing in anything your whole life? And you're not accepting Jesus Christ. What if it is real? What if when you die, you do stand before a holy God? What if Jesus is the only way to heaven? How will it be then? Atheist got mad and didn't want to talk about it. I'd love to tell you that he said he got saved, but... He said he just got mad and didn't want to talk about it. But I don't believe there's anybody here tonight that's an atheist. I hope not. The Bible teaches that only the fool has saith in his heart there is no God. But I believe that very likely there's people here that are lost and never been saved. Could be those tonight that were deceived. Maybe you made a profession. <clears throat> three times in the New Testament the Bible teaches, and this is three words that really pretty much changed my life. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse number 9, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Three times in the Word of God in the New Testament the Bible says, Be not deceived. Probably pretty important stuff, our ain't it? I want to ask you a question tonight. Do you know without a shadow of a doubt that if you died tonight that you would go to heaven? And if you do, why? What's your reasoning behind that? Do you have a testimony? Can you go back right now in your mind? Could you, could you stand up? If I was to get a hot mic from Luke up here and I was walk to, to walk to where you're at in front of these people unashamedly, could you tell of the time that Jesus saved your soul? Could you give that account of when you met Jesus and He changed your life? Could you say, preacher, he's the best thing that ever happened to me? Tonight there's shouts and praises all over this house. But there's some that's sitting here right now. And you're in the same situation them four lepers were outside that gate. You're contemplating. You're thinking, well, what if I take my chances? I'm young. I hope to live until I'm old and, and kind of enjoy life and do what I want to. I, I remember that attitude. You're not promised tomorrow, neither am I. That's right, preacher. Are you willing to take a chance, play games with God on an if, on a what, on a maybe? The Bible teaches that salvation is a no-so kind of salvation. I remember in John chapter 9, there was a blind man who met Jesus one day. Jesus spit on some dirt and rubbed it in his eyes and said, Go down to the pool of Shalom and wash. Could Jesus not have touched this man and spoke the words and him just opened his eyes and seen? Yeah, he could have. But he required a little something out of him on his part. Here tonight, all he's asking of you is to get up and to go down to the altar. Bow your head. Confess your sin. Say, Lord, I can't make it without you. I don't want to go to hell. Lord, will you come into my heart and save my soul tonight? I promise you tonight that he said if you'd come to him, he'd in no wise cast you out. Tonight he'll save you. He wants to save you. It's not his will that any should perish. But my question to you is why sit you here until you die? 
It's time to get up and go and get saved. It's time to be washed in the blood of Jesus. I'll tell you what, I, Randy, Randy Shepherd talked to those youth, and I, I was just wild. Man, how great that was. And he got on their level, and he related to them. And no longer than I've been out of school, which is a pretty long time now, but 18, 20 years, I guess. But I find it hard to relate to young people sometimes. But he so got on their level, and he talked to them about things they were going through, and it was bringing back my mind like I was a teenager. And I was like, yeah, that's me he's talking about. The one that was in church. The one that was in youth choir. The one that was doing these things, but still out in the world living carnally. We know tonight that the devil has so many devices. He has our children at church on Sunday, but through the week they're on their phones looking at things they should not. They're, they're living in sexual relationships that they should not be in outside of marriage. They're looking at pornography. They talk one way around their mom and daddy and their pastor, but they talk different on the school bus and on the ball field. My friend, I remember what that was like. I urge you, I beg you tonight, be not deceived. Do you know that you know that you know? Have you been born again, washed in the blood of Jesus? Are you saved tonight? Luke, you come on. Why sit you here until you die? You don't have to. What do you mean, preacher? Over there in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, the Bible says, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Well, we're all going to die. I know what Hebrews 9, 27 says, outside of the coming of the Lord. But even though we're going to die, a Christian don't really die. Amen. <laughs> Amen. When I close my eyes in what we call death, <laughs> I will just begin to live. And I will be more, you think, mm. I've been listening to a song, this may not be y'all's cup of tea, I don't know, it ain't always my cup of tea, but I like this song. I was preaching a place every night, and they sung it, it's a worship song. It's uh, Brandon Lake, too good to not believe in. And he goes through all these things that he's seen God do. And I'm here to tell you tonight, he's too good to not believe in. He is too good to not believe in. God is too good. What's he done for you tonight? What's he want to do for you tonight? Gosh, I didn't even get to preach into the word where I wanted to go. But I think I followed God. When they finally went into the city, do you know what? God had it prepared for them just exactly how it's supposed to be. There was no enemy in sight. Right now you're being fought by the enemy. You're, you're questioning your mind. Will they laugh at me? What will they think? Well, I've made a profession before. you got all that going on in your mind. But you'll find out when you stand up and take the first step and come to this altar, the enemy will be gone. God had the enemy... They was not one man in the camp when they got there. You know what happened to them? They were sitting there in the camp, the Syrians were, and they heard something. <laughs> Woo! The Bible said they heard the sound of chariots and horses. Where'd them come from? Go back over there to chapter 6 to Dothan. Remember Elisha's servant? He was scared to death. And Elisha prayed and he said, Hey God, open his eyes so he can see. He went out and he looked in the hills and the field. Hills were full of chariots and horses of fire. I believe those same chariots and the horses of fire came rolling through outside of the enemy's camp that night. The Bible teaches us that they took tail and they ran. They were so scared. They didn't take anything. They didn't jump on a horse. They didn't load a, a mule or a donkey down. They left them tied. They ran out of the camp. And if you'll read the Bible closely, it said the, the harder they ran and the further they ran, they went to throwing their clothes off, trying to run a little faster. They found their garments laying in the road. They were scared to death because God put the enemy on the move. Now listen here tonight. Don't you let the devil keep you from coming to this altar. 
you're in a good place with good people that love you and will pray for you. And tonight, your spiritual well-being is more important than anything in this world. I'm begging you tonight, whatever your need may be, whether it's salvation we've preached on, whether it's getting right with your fellow man, hey, I'll tell you what, one I didn't hit, but I'd like to, and Hoy sung on it. It's time to get up and go. Give some flyers tonight. Bible says give honor where honors do. Maybe you need to get up and go hug somebody's neck and tell them how much that they mean to you and what a blessing they've been in your life. It's time to get up and go. We need to do something. We've sat on our seat too long. It's time to hit the altars. It's time to pray like we've never prayed before. But I'm telling you tonight, I'm begging you with everything in me, if you're here tonight and you're unsaved, it's time to get up and go get saved. Amen. I love you tonight. I mean that. You just go ahead and sing. Bless them all. Pass me not, O oh gentle Savior. to pray tonight. Would you come? from you but do you know that Jesus said that he wanted to give you life and give it more abundantly I can't tell you those four lepers had a blessing waiting on them that they couldn't even imagine how good it was going to be and if you're sitting there tonight and you're contemplating and you're fighting I'm telling you you can't even imagine how good what Jesus has got waiting on you is going to be 
I didn't know how good it's going to be, but it just keeps getting better and better all along. Boy, I tell you, he wants to bless you tonight abundantly. Why don't you come? Did you enjoy the service tonight? How about it for Hoy Duncan? How about it for Brother Patrick O'Dell? How about it for Jesus Christ? Yeah. Amen. Woo. Hallelujah. Glory. Oh, I don't know about you, but I'm, I am revived. <laughs> I saw some of y'all on this altar tonight get a touch you ain't had in a long time. And oh, what, how exciting it is. We hope that tomorrow night that you'll call five friends and say, you need to go to meeting with me tomorrow night. Amen. Call all, like I said yesterday, call all the drunks and the drug addicts. Yeah, call them, drag them here, kicking and screaming. Do whatever you need to do to get them here. And even get the Pharisee to come with you. That's who he was preaching about, you know, a little while there tonight. That Pharisee. Bring them to the house of God. I can promise you this. Now, I can't promise a whole lot, but I can promise you this. When you, when you come to First Free Will Baptist Church, you're going to hear preaching. And you're going to hear that. That's one thing I can, I can promise you. And not only are you going to hear preaching, but you're going to hear some good music. Amen. Amen. Praise be unto the Lord. Just a couple of announcements before we close. Um, Wanted to announce this last night. Well, Brother Roy ain't here to hear it, and his daughter ain't here to hear it, but maybe they're watching online. But on Friday and Saturday, we sold more barbecue than we ever had before, over $10,000. Yep. You ought to have seen Porky Pig flying around that place. I'm telling you what. I was, I was saying, Lord, bless this unclean meat. Make it clean, Lord. And also for our singers and preachers, if you would, in my office, if, if I don't get back there in time, go back into my office and on the right side, there's some ties and socks there and you go through and you, you pick out what you'd like and uh, that, that is a gift from one of our sweet members and you go and do that and I promise you, you'll be, be blessed by it. Brother Lucas, you got anything? All right, tomorrow night, it's going to be great. Brother, Brother Roger Duncan's going to be preaching tomorrow night, okay? All of our singers and our groups have, and, and some of our ministers have product out there to help you grow closer to the Lord. And we hope that you'll visit their table and take some of that good stuff home with you, okay? We love you tonight. Let's get our hands up in the air and let's exercise. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. May God bless you. Be safe and good night.